I'm going to be talking to Evelina Stoiku, who is with uh, Bloomberg NEF, about the record low battery pack prices in 2025. This has affected not only electric vehicle, in fact, electric transportation costs, but also uh, stationary storage uh, uh, costs. So uh, welcome to the interview, Evelina. Thank you for having me. Um, as you mentioned, battery prices reached a, a record low this year. Um, the pack prices that we saw were $108 per kilowatt hour, which was about an 8% drop compared to the previous year. Um, and this drop was primarily attributed to continuing cell manufacturing over capacity, intense competition, um, and the ongoing shift to lower cost lithium iron phosphate batteries across a lot of these segments. Um, while the drop was not as large as last year, the battery industry is still grappling with a lot of overcapacity, um, especially in China, which pushed prices uh, much lower in 2025. Um, so th th these have been some of the main, main drivers. And as a result, we've seen lower um, battery prices across very important segments like uh, EVs and stationary storage. Um what are the, uh, I guess, uh, Evelino, I'm kind of, here in North America, our perception of uh, battery prices and the technology is that it's kind of stalled, you know, where, where EV sales have stalled uh, and so on. But in fact, uh, outside of North America, I mean, this is a really dynamic sector and, and battery uh, technologies are changing quickly, prices are falling quickly. Is that a, a reasonable way to, to look at uh, the battery industry outside of North America? Yeah, overall, the battery industry is growing and prices are lower. Um, even though there are ups and downs in certain markets, um, we're still seeing growth, even if that growth is not as high as in previous years. And in many cases, this is driven by market dynamics, supply and demand um, um, sort of um, market dynamics, as well as policy changes. So, so it makes sense for the industry to respond. However, a lot of the fundamental drivers um, behind the economics and the technology when it comes to batteries and battery prices are still quite strong. We have a lot of manufacturing capacity, which increases scale and, and with, with more scale and uh, manufacturing advancements and technology advancements, you're able to see lower costs. Um, and then at the same time, in parallel, we're seeing uh, battery technology improving. So um, not only improving the economics, but also the technology, increasing energy density, so you can pack more capacity in the same volume or weight. Um, and this enables better products, which is overall good for the industry. Um, so this is a, a trend that in the long term we expect to see continuing, even if there's some um, bumps along the road. Well, Evelina, um, is it fair to say that the, uh, the industry has got to the point now where costs are low enough and there are more and more applications and the uh, consumers, like basically the market and economics are driving uh, the industry and adoption of, of battery technology more so than policy, which I think, you know, probably up to three, four years ago, maybe could be argued that if policy was the main driver, policy now is a much smaller uh, driver, if you will. Yeah, I think both are important drivers, but the economics have definitely um, had more power over the recent years as we've seen lower prices. Um, and the importance of these factors are quite varies depending on the region and the sector. Um, so if we look at EVs, for example, and price parity between EVs and internal combustion engine cars, um, in markets such as China, we're seeing these economics really materializing with a lot of EV models being at parity or at lower cost compared to comparable combustion cars. But in other markets, especially outside of China, we still see EVs having a, a premium um, and policy still continues to be an important uh, driver. But as, as prices and economics get lower, um, we're definitely getting there and they become more of a strong factor as, uh, as we see the progress. For a long time now, $100 a kilowatt hour for a battery pack, not a cell, but a pack, uh, was kind of the threshold for price parity with an internal combustion engine car. Uh, but then lately I've heard, uh, you know, read some analysts who were saying that maybe that price is actually $90 a kilowatt hour or 80, even $80 a kilowatt hour, 
what's your take on that? Yeah, we've always um, heard of the hundred dollars per kilowatt hour uh, reference as a um, a broader target, uh, but in reality, price parity is really more of a spectrum compared to a single point. So the price parity for EVs is going to be different uh, based on the different regions that you're looking at, as well as the different vehicle segments. Um, so at uh, any given point, if you look at a specific region and a specific market, that point is going to be different. Um, with that being said, having one reference point is helpful. Um, and uh, we've been using $100 per kilowatt hour as a reference mark over uh, the past many years just because um, many folks in the industry uh, are also referencing it. Um, but things get more nuanced when you actually look at um, different markets and, and different models. And um, for that reason, BNF has additional research looking at um, the economics across different segments so you, you can have a more detailed view. Uh, Evelina, what about, you know, we've been talking about EVs uh, and we're generally that's understood to be electric cars. But in fact, the uh, transportation sector that's being electrified is much uh, more, uh, more complex than that. We're seeing two and three wheelers uh, in Asia, which is a huge market. We're seeing uh, medium duty, you know, uh, uh, vehicles like uh, garbage trucks and, and delivery vans. And in China, we're now even seeing the electrification of class eight semi trucks, the, you know, the long haul uh, freight trucks we see on the highway. Those are even being electrified. And is it the is, is the technology getting better, like more energy density and the cost coming down? So do you ex expect to see that that trend will accelerate where more and more types of transportation can be electrified? Yeah, I think it's a major driver. Um, and the other thing that works in parallel here is overcapacity in China, because China produces so many uh, batteries, uh, a lot more than they need domestically based on our demand outlook. And in many cases, more than the entire world needs. Um, this really pushes companies to look for segments um, to electrify and looking uh, for opportunities, both in terms of applications and also different different regions that could benefit from batteries. So um, these low costs, which are um, driven partially by that overcapacity, is, is driving electrification for a lot of different segments, um, which is something that uh, is definitely worth uh, keeping an eye on and, and watching. Um, and as a lot of these segments get bigger, uh, we also see prices across segments converging. So historically, battery prices for EVs have been um, relatively lower compared to other segments, this is commercial vehicles. Uh, but as volumes increase, uh, we're actually seeing these segments converging when it comes to pricing. Now, I, I was uh, uh, reading comments by a uh, Chinese government uh, spokesperson who was responding to the allegations from uh, North America, you know, that the uh, the uh, Chinese government had contributed to this oversupply, overcapacity. And his take on it was quite different. He said, uh, well, that's true, but we build in advance of demand. So if there is, you know, maybe twice as much battery building capacity as we need today. Uh, what's your take on how quickly that market will expand to fill up the, the uh, production capacity, manufacturing capacity that China has already built and frankly is still building? Yeah, it's uh, it's true that when a lot of companies think about uh, production capacity and they plan ahead in, for the coming years, uh, they need to do so in advance. It typically takes about um, one to three years, depending on where you're at, where you're at to uh, build a battery manufacturing plant. So a lot of these companies have to be wary uh, of that and, and think think of what is going to happen in the future. Um, and when you're three years behind, you don't necessarily have um, all the information that you need, and you can't necessarily foresee all the policy changes and changes in demand. So um, during the past couple of years, uh, a lot of companies realized that many of their targets were, when it comes to battery demand overall, were higher than expected. Um, and as a result, there's more a lot more capacity than demand, which tends to be the case in uh, even in in normal uh, normal years. Um, however, it was more pronounced because of um, lower demand 
from EVs than, than expectations. Uh, with well, that being said, it... yeah, so. oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I, I meant to add that with that being said, um, markets tend to correct themselves. So uh, in, in instances where, where there's a, a lot of overcapacity, it's going to be pushing prices down, um, helping demand pick up again. And it kind of feeds into that cycle where you have demand and supply balancing each other. Evelina, thank you very much for this. This is very insightful. And uh, we'll look forward to more interviews about battery prices with you. Thank you.